Welcome to the Peasants Are Revolting, a history show about the working and disenfranchised classes done by an unsuccessful stand-up comedian who's doing this because a virus thing means nobody cares to hear jokes anymore. Welcome to today's episode, which is something I found interesting, but before we start, a question. What group of people were the most likely to overrun your ship, take your cargo, free your slaves, take your women, drink your rum, all while singing under a black skull flag? It's pretty obvious when you think about it, isn't it? It's the gays. That's right, the gays. Today they're known for the Eurovision lip syncing, drag racing and just being all around fabulous. But that wasn't always the case. See back in the mid 17th to 18th century they were known for something much much different. Piracy. Some even say that walking down the catwalk started as walking the plank and RuPaul even got his start by attacking merchant vessels. The backstory. There is a book written by a person called Beorberg called Sodomy and the Piratical Tradition. And in this book he gives proof to a strange and when the book was released very controversial theory. The theory was this, that despite their reputation for poor hygiene, bad sanitary and perceived affinity for prostitutes, pirates were in fact gay pirates. Or boutineers. And this wasn't just some crazy theory made up to frighten some homophobes aboard a navy ship, mainly because homophobes knew better than to join the navy, and because there's a lot of proof to this theory. Proof of the poof. First is a practice of mat lodge. This is where a young strapping pirate who's learning the ropes quite literally <laughs> is taken in by older pirates who teach him and in return they become what was known in the 1970s as special friends. They would then share a bed, share what they stole and if one of them got killed the other would get their possessions. This eventually became the first use of same sex marriage showing that pirates, the people who ate such little fruit that their teeth fell out and whose main forms of interaction were either bombing or drunkenly screaming were more liberal than the entire world until 2001. Then along came the Dutch. This means if you ever go to a gay wedding it happened because of pirates and you should dress accordingly. Here is a traditional gay costume uh, which shows that throughout history gay people have remained constantly fashion conscious. Proof to institutionalization. This evidence is known as prison proof. It states that if you have a load of men stuck in a confined space together with little to no women around, they'll eventually start fucking each other. And because essentially men are like gibbons, after a while any hole looks good. Or to put it another way, you don't spend that much time around semen without becoming a little gay. So basically the first pirates may or may not have been gay, but they started riding anyway, presumably because there was a huge mix up on the poop deck. And because this all happened around the golden age of piracy, 1650 to 1720, at a time where homosexuality was punishable by debt in England, where the majority of professional pirates had come from, pirates gained a reputation for harbouring gay people, which meant that uh, pirates were denounced from the pulpit and people were told to never join them unless they wanted to become gay themselves, and then they'd eventually end up in gay hell where they'll be forced to wear beige uniforms and listen to speeches from the Westboro Baptist Church. And this led to one thing, more gay pirates. Proof tree. Someone's out, they have to come out. Gay people joined the pirates because it was the only place they could practice their homosexuality and it was far too dangerous on the mainland due to the lack of lube. Those who joined would start a mat lodge with another pirate, which would mean pirates get a reputation for gayness, which would attract more gay people because gay people go to places that have gay people so they can reproduce, which is basic science. This created a cycle of gay people aren't allowed on land, pirates taking gay people, gay people become pirates, more people say that pirates are gay, uh, pirate ships get a name for harbouring gay people, and gay people aren't allowed on land so they become pirates. It's a big circle of circle of gay piratiness. Examples. Robert Culford and John Swan were shipmates and extraordinarily successful pirates. They had a mat lodge for years and lived together even on land when they gave up being pirates until their deaths. Bartholomew Roberts, a Welsh pirate who was known as one of the most successful pirates during the Golden Age and wrote the Pirate Code, a law and custom book observed by pirates, was said to be gay and had a fascination with a surgeon who lived on a Caribbean island called George Wilson, who was not a pirate himself so this wasn't even a mat lodge and many of his crewmen stated the two had a very intimate relationship. William Teach, or more famously known as Blackbeard, wouldn't allow women on his ship, which was a somewhat common superstition at the time uh, to not let women on board. However, he also forbid his men and himself from using prostitutes or having sex with women on the lands in which they landed, which was not superstition, and his ship had a strong use of Matt Lodge, and he talked about sex, 
which you know does lead to one conclusion. And here in reports of homosexuality in 1645, the French government of Tartuga, modern day Haiti, imported thousands of prostitutes to stop the rampant homosexuality. Those prostitutes then claimed they were mainly involved in treasons for gay pirates who, when done, left together. So basically the French government had the first recorded use of state-sponsored prostitution until along came the Dutch. <laughs> Finally, every ship had an account of giving Jolly Roger a rise, so, you know, no wonder he's so jolly. <laughs> Shit joke about the flag. Ugh. So, pirates are gay, but they also did other cool things. Pirates had the first recorded example of health insurance, making the equivalent of $50,000 uh, for the loss of a hand or leg, and up to 153000 if one became blind. So, if you ever see a pirate with, like, an eye patch and a wooden leg, more than likely they made enough savings to live comfortably from that. Direct democracy was also used on many ships as crew members would get a vote in where to go, who to rob and who would be captain, making each ship a float and independent grassroots society. This essentially made every ship examples of what today would be a requisite for another bunch of scruffy, gay loving, anti-authoritarians, uh, the anarchists. Pirates practiced religious tolerance as well as at the same time as the golden age of piracy, the crusades that were happening in Europe but uh, there are numerous examples of Christians, Muslims and Jews and other religions all sharing the same boat with no reported hostilities as they were all focused on just gaining treasure. Sometimes as well they also had equal opportunities for women with captains such as Grace O'Malley having a 200 men crew, Chin Chin in China who started out as a prostitute, married a pirate captain who died, she then took over and commanded a fleet of 60,000 pirates on 1,500 ships and Anne Bonny and Mary Reed, who were two of the most feared pirates in the Golden Age of Piracy, and were widely considered to be at least the bravest fighters on their ship, if not the entire Caribbean. Conclusion Piracy started as a way for the lower classes of colonial European countries to gain wealth, prestige and power without working for the state, which at that stage was generally working to enforce a system of slavery in the New World. And due to the fact that pirates would be stuck together for long periods of time, they would start having sex with each other, which resulted in gay people joining them due to the persecution they faced on land, while also being perfect examples of toxic masculinity within the gay community. But at least when they do it, there's a lot more flair. But mainly it shows that piracy was and always has been, and to this day continues to be, a refuge for the disenfranchised, powerless and persecuted. And shows that if a society or world shuts a people out from gaining any power, having any wealth, or even being allowed to live in a somewhat reasonable situation, they will fight back and steal what is being held away from them. It happened to gay people in the golden age, the poor throughout history, and even today in places like Somalia. And when exploitation and disenfranchisement happens, it will live alongside it as a kind of evil twin. And that's, uh, yeah, that's the episode. Uh, thanks for watching. This has been the Peasants of Revolt. Hope you listen again. If you don't, uh, goodbye.